We have a special edition of For Pete's Sake, IPMI edition. Peter Hug joins me now in Phoenix, Arizona. Peter, could be worse, right? Yeah, it could be worse. <laughs> a little warm, but it's nice. When we're looking at markets, it doesn't look too pretty, though, right, Peter? No, it doesn't. After Friday's, uh, Thursday's sell-off uh, through the 1337 level, uh, the technical damage is pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty immense in this market. Right. Well, last time we spoke, Peter, you said that a wedge was forming, and you were expecting some sort of of uh, breakout, either on the downside or the upside. That's exactly what what we saw. Uh, what's next going forward? Well, I'm quite frankly, uh, you know, at the IPMI conference here, uh, you know, I have the opportunity of meeting with some of the uh, the bigger bigger banks and some of the bigger houses that uh, that do wholesale trading. And uh, to a man, uh, all of us uh, were surprised that 1337 was taken out that easily. Um, Friday, uh, the bounce was inevitable. I mean, coming into a weekend, some profit taking, some short covering uh, totally made sense. Uh, I expected uh, some uh, uh, continuation of that uh, short covering coming into Asia and Europe, and it didn't happen overnight. But uh, the market is holding pretty well. It's at the 1285 range, and I think it's uh, it needs some time to just catch its breath and consolidate here. Right. And in your morning blog, Peter, you said, you know, we either need to see investment demand pick up again or a major event happen in the world. Is that what it will take? I think so. Uh, you know, but I'm, uh, when I wrote my blog on Friday, I also indicated that, uh, you know, Bernanke has done, has said absolutely nothing different than he had said two weeks ago. I mean, if the economy improves, right. he's uh, looking to taper back on his bond purchasing, but uh, you know, as early as this morning, uh, Dudley, the New York Fed chairman, uh, governor, sorry, came out and said uh, that the Fed hasn't done enough in stimulus. And I think uh, global uh, central banks are fighting deflation, not inflation, and I'm still in the camp that I don't think the Fed is going to move until 2014. Well, some analysts I've been speaking to here have told me that it was an overreaction. I totally agree, and uh, that's why I expected uh, some follow-through uh, short covering and and uh, on the Friday bounce in Europe and Asia, which did not happen. So that's the only thing that gives me pause. And Peter, you mentioned banks, and that's an interesting note because today we saw Goldman Sachs, UBS, Credit Suisse expecting gold prices to retreat back to pre-QE. Do you think we'll have more people come out of the, the woods and announce more bearish statements? Uh, yeah, banks tend to be behind the curve. Economists tend to be behind the curve. Uh, for gold to break down uh, below 850, uh, highly, I, I don't think it'll happen. Uh, uh, you know, but it's their job. All they do is they do the uh, they do the math. They figure out how many days are left in the year, and they bring down their average for the year. It's basically hindsight forecasting. Right. Oil also retreating today, this Monday. Uh, Peter, is that in line with what gold? What's happening with gold? Usually, they're both correlated. Well, I think there's a deflationary concern globally, and uh, you know, China again came out uh, over the weekend with some uh, slower than expected economic numbers. So I think the the central bank fight here is not going to be an inflationary one in the short term, as I had suggested numerous times in the past. I think it's going to be a deflationary fight. And in that context, all hard assets in the short term uh, are going to continue under pressure. All right, Peter, let's wrap up. I know you have a golf game to attend. <laughs> support and resistance levels you're looking at for gold right now. Oh, geez. Um, you know, support, I'd uh, short term support 1272, uh, resistance psychologically the $1,300 level. But uh, for the uptrend, I think to resume or, or to even grab any kind of legs, I think you need to take out that 1327 level. And silver trading below $20 an ounce today, uh, Peter. I, well, again, I think if you're in a deflationary environment and uh, there's lack of demand for industrial metals, especially coming out of China, uh, industrial metals are going to get a little harder. And you're seeing copper coming down, testing the $3 a pound range. Uh, the weakness in copper is also uh, uh, contributing to the weakness in silver in the short term. Finally, Peter, I heard you giving some advice uh, to some people earlier in the day, suggesting that this would be a good time to buy smaller coins and bars. Yes, I think, you know, if the market continues lower here, there's going to be increased demand for physical and the small investment size bars. So if you're looking to buy, it might be an opportune time to buy some physical here. Uh, because if you wait and the premiums go up, you're going to end up paying the same anyway. And right now, the, uh, the physical is available on the market. Great thoughts from you today, Peter. I'll let you uh, enjoy the beautiful weather. Thanks for being, Thank being with us. You're welcome. And thanks for watching this special edition of For Pete's Sake. You can catch more from the IPMI conference on Kitco.com or follow this conversation on Twitter at Daniela Camboni. Thanks for watching.